Welcome to Backyard Biodiversity. In this first episode, we will have a look at this place. These steps were intended for plants, but this place only gets little light and no rain at all. After some unsuccessful attempts to grow flowers here, this place was simply left empty and turned completely desert. Or so we first thought. There might not be any plants, but it turns out quite a few species of arthropods are now living here, so let's have a closer look. For example, there are spiders. For a short time, around July, August, there are plenty of these insects emerging from the ground. I don't know which species this is, but it's probably a spider wasp. They hunt spiders. See this? It's a bumblebee. Behind this tile, there is a nest of Bombus pratorum, the early bumblebee. This bee lives in small colonies, reaching a few dozen individuals. There are also different species of solitary bees digging their nest here, year after year, like this one. Or this one. This year, while observing the bees and other animals living here, I also found these. After a little research, I identified them as Citaris muralis. It turns out they have an interesting life cycle. Using a rather complex strategy, these beetles get their larvae into a bee's nest, where they first eat the bee's eggs larvae and then feed on the honey stores. It's a very interesting species, but it's a parasite on bees. And I like bees, so I'm not sure if I'm happy about having this species here. But however interesting they might be, we're not going to be looking at any of these animals today. Today I will present you the species living in these pits. I started noticing them a few years after the place turned dry. There are actually two different species building such pits here. One building small, steep pits, the other building larger and more open pits. Let's first have a look at the smaller pits. The insects living there lie at the bottom of their pits. When feeling in danger, they hide themselves below the surface and usually stay perfectly motionless, which can make them very hard to find. Let's dig one out. Can you see it? Well, it's nothing really amazing. It's a worm lion larva. Worm lions are a family of Diptera, fly order. The species we have here is Vermilio vermilio, the only species of worm lions known from around here. I reared some larvae to see what the adults look like. A classical Diptera, but they don't bite. Let's now see what the species in the bigger pits look like. Unlike worm lions, they lie with their heads in the centre of the pit, their body being buried in the side wall. When disturbed or feeling in danger, they retreat backwards into the side wall. If you watch closely, you can see this movement, which allows you to know in which side to dig to find them, even if the head is hidden below the surface. Let's do it again so you can see. I think it's on the right. There it is. Once more. Oh, it thought it was a prey. Well, now we know where it is. Let's dig one out to have a closer look. It's an antlion larva. The species we have here is Euroleon nostras, the most common species of antlions in urban areas around here. They don't like being exposed like that, so if they are put back on the ground, they will soon dig themselves in again. They always move backwards. Antlions and worm lions live in very similar ways. Both need dry places with loose ground to build their pits. So in humid climates, you usually find them under overhanging rocks, thick bushes, on the roof or bridges. They don't need sunlight, but as sunny places are often drier than shady places, ant lions are often found in sun-exposed places. Worm lions, on the other hand, seem to avoid sunny places. Once they have buried themselves into the ground, they can start building their pit, 
which will be used to trap prey. An ant line takes about one to a few hours to build its pit. This time lapse spans a total time of two hours 45 minutes. Digging the pit in a spiral allows them to get a large perfectly shaped trap. This is what it looks like in real time. I have seen some time lapses of ant lions building their pits in sand. It looks really great, so I wanted to try it too. We don't have any sand in our backyard, but we do have a lake with a beach nearby. It's not as fine as I would like, but it will do. This time lapse spends a total time of 3 hours 45 minutes. Oh, there are two ant lions. I hope they won't get in each other's way. Hmm, well, okay. What I didn't mention before is that they usually don't start building their pits right away. Especially after they have been disturbed, they will usually wait a while and wander around in search of a good place. To illustrate this, I added many ant lions and filmed the whole surface it turned out they were a little too crowded, but the resulting time lapse is still very interesting. So here you have 18 hours of ant lions trying to build their pits in an overcrowded space. Let's now go back to worm lines and see how they build their pits. It's not as impressive as ant lines. Oh, that's a big chunk. Will the worm line be able to throw it out? Don't give up. There you go. The way they build their pits leads to differently shaped pits depending on the ground. Large and conical, like ant line pits, if the ground is sandy and deep with steep walls if the ground is powdery and doesn't easily collapse. Let's watch this process in time lapse. The total time is 11 hours. This is what a worm line colony looks like once every larva has built its pit. As mentioned before, the reason ant lines and worm lines build these pits is to catch prey. I'll catch some ants so I can show you. This is the black garden ant. It is extremely common in gardens. While I'm here, I'll also catch some bigger ants for the ant lines. Formica cunicularia, also rather common, but not as common as the black garden ant. First, 
the worm lions. Oh, it escaped. Well, maybe next time. This time it won't escape. Now for the ant lions. Notice how they throw sand at the escaping prey to destabilize the walls and make the prey fall. Worm lions rarely do that. Now let's feed them until they become adults to see what they look like. For this we will need many more ants. Ant lion development is quite flexible. If they get a lot of food they grow up much faster. If they don't catch anything they can stay many many weeks without eating. But even if you feed them a lot it takes a while until they turn adults. Once they are big enough, the antline larvae make a cocoon to turn into adults. These balls are hidden underground. The ones you see here were dug up after the adults emerged. After a few weeks, the adults emerge. This is what they look like. This one just emerged. The wings are not yet fully pumped up. They are still a little wrinkled, which is why it's not flying away. In urban areas of humid climates, you can most easily find these species in places like this. On this show, I use the red asterisk to indicate pictures that have not been taken in our backyard. This picture has been taken under that bridge. Look at all these worm lion pits. Places like this are also perfect for ant lions and worm lions. Here are a few slides to summarize. In our garden, we only have one species of ant lions, Overleon nostrus. But there are a few other species that can be found around here. Worm lions. Only one species, Vermilio vermilio, is known from around here. They are often found in huge populations. Also, in my opinion, they should rather be called antworms than worm lions. Das wär's gsi für heute. Merci fürs Zuhören und bis zum nächsten Mal.